Umar radiallahu anhu revived in his time, continued to throughout Uthman's time, continued throughout Ali radiallahu anhu's time, continued till today in the Haram. There has never been a time after Umar radiallahu anhu in Medina or Mecca where they prayed after that time individually and not in Jama'ah. Now you tell me, if this was wrong, why didn't the Sahaba stand up and say, Umar, you're going against the Quran and Sunnah? Wouldn't they say that? They would clearly say that. There are hundreds of these examples in the Quran and Sunnah. But what we must remember, brothers, is that when we have this type of thing, certain things we can have ikhtilaf, certain things we cannot. Now let me tell you another thing about ikhtilaf. The Quran says, in the Quran, in the fourth juz, in Surah Ali Imran, which is the third surah of the Holy Quran, the Quran says, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا This is ayah number 103. Hold all of you, all of you Muslims, hold on to the rope of Allah. All of you together. وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Don't separate. Don't disintegrate. Don't depart from one another. وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا Remember the time when Allah has had favored upon you that you were enemies one time but Allah then brought, reconciled your hearts together فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ And because of His blessings you became brothers. Remember this time the Quran is saying. وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَىٰ شَفَىٰ حُفْرَةٍ مِّنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِّنَا You were on the cliff or the edge of falling into the fire of hell and Allah saved you from that. كَذَٰلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَةِ لَعَلَّكُ تَحْتَدُونَ This is exactly the way Allah explains His ayahs, His verses, so that you may be guided. Now in this ayah, this ayah by several ulama has been understood in several ways. But let's look deep in the Qur'an. What does the Qur'an really say? The Qur'an, anyway in the Qur'an you will not find that Allah says that there is no room for ikhtilaf. But in fact Allah says, the people who do ikhtilaf or who, dispute, who disagree with one another, Allah sometimes guides people to the truth. فَهَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لِمَا اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ مِنَ الْحَقِّ بِإِذْنِ With His will, He will guide certain people to the absolute truth when they dispute with one another or disagree with one another. Here in this ayah Allah says, do not separate. Now we must understand, in the Qur'an, in the Sunnah, if people disagree with one another, but in the end, their goals are different, then there's a problem here. But in the Qur'an and regarding the Sunnah, if people disagree, their means are different, but their ends are the same, there is nothing wrong with this. I'll give you an example. Somebody wants to go from London to Birmingham. One person says, I'm going to take the M40. Another person says, I'm going to take the M1. Another person says, I'm going to take the inner routes inside between M1 and M40. Another one says, I'm going to go around to the A1 and so on and then take another route towards, the, towards Birmingham. Are you going to say, but they all are going to Birmingham. Are you going to say they're all wrong? No. One wants to take one way, another one take another. Khalas. Get to Birmingham, that's, that's our goal. As long as you get to Alhamdulillah. But let's say once they all need to go to Birmingham. One says, I'm going to take... Uh, the Dartford Tunnel and I'm going to go towards the east another one says I'm going to take the M45 uh, and I'm going to go into different direction another one says I'm going to the M1 but I'm going to head for Scotland another one says I'm going to go towards Bristol or Wales now here there's a problem because they need to get to Birmingham one will get there, several won't here they need to be stopped and need to be extended no, this is the way to go to Birmingham the same way, each Sahabi understood that the goal of this whole religion is إِعْلَاءُ كَلِمَةِ اللَّهِ is to lift the ideology of Islam, the banner of Islam, the word of Allah, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ to lift that up 
so that that conquers every other ideology in the world, that conquers every other concept in the world, that becomes the most supreme authority in the world, that becomes the most the, the first thing that people follow in their homes, that becomes the first thing that people look at when they come to a decision of whether to go to go with their whims or against their whims. They look at La ilaha illallah. They look at Allah. They lift the word of Allah in the world. Allah says in the Holy Quran. وَالَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ They understood. The mission of the Prophet ﷺ was لِيُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ He sent him with guidance so that with this Islam he may dominate every other batil, every other falsehood in the world. That is the goal. Now the way the people reach this goal may sometimes be different. As long as people have this in their minds, it's okay. If somebody says, no, my mission now is so that uh, my group, my group of madhabs, my group of non-madhabs, my, my group of establishing a political regime in the world, my group of, of um, being militant and being, be, be, being, uh, going into the fighting fields of Islam and so on, this is the correct group. And anyone who's not following this one is all wrong. This is, this is where they're going wrong. Because then, one, what he's saying is, one saying he wants to go to Bristol, another one is saying he wants to go somewhere else, another one is saying somewhere else. No. Let's look at the Sahabas again. They all were under one teacher. They did not have two teachers. There was not two teachers. There were not two prophets in that time. There was only one prophet. He taught them the religion. But the Prophet wasallam, he was universal. In his sunnah, you have him adhering strictly to the Qur'an. Sometimes. In his sunnah, sometimes, Aisha radiallahu anhu says, مَا خُيِّرَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فِي أَمْرَيْنِ إِلَّا اخْتَارَ أَهْوَنَهُمَا The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was never, he never came across a dilemma, but he chose the easiest one of the two. Now look at this, there's a contradiction. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sometimes strictly adhering to the sunnah. To his own way, to the Quran. Another time, the Prophet is choosing the easy option. Where do you, where do you know where to follow? The Prophet taught many things to the Sahabas. Sometimes he's there in the morning. The Quran says that the Prophet should not leave the people of Ahlul Sufa inside the Masjid who are only remembering Allah morning and night. وَلَا تَصْرِدِ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَةً Don't leave these people. There are other Sahabas outside. Some Sahabas are going to the hills to give da'wah. Some Sahabas are going to Medina and other places and giving da'wah to the Jews, calling them to Islam. Some Sahabas are staying inside the mosques. Some Sahabas are working. Some Sahabas are going inside the homes and spreading Islam. But the Prophet ﷺ, Allah says to him, don't leave them alone. But the Quran says, Ya أَيُّهَا الْمُدَّثِّرْ قُمْ فَأَنذِرْ وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ O one who's wrapped up in the love of Allah, stand up, deliver your message, go outside now. Don't always stay in the side of the masjid. Another sunnah is, go outside and give da'wah. Don't just stay in the side of the masjid. So the Prophet is going out. There's another sunnah now. But then at that time, Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum comes, a blind sahabi. He tries to take some, uh, some advice of the Prophet Sallallahu tried to ask him something. The Prophet Sallallahu frowned. He did not like that because he was talking to some kuffars. He was talking on a political level. He wanted to talk on a different level, not to the believers now, to the non-believers. And he frowned and he turned away. Allah said, no, that can't be your sunnah anymore. No, 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 no. You've got to look after the people in the kuffars, you've got to give them da'wah. The but if one of your members comes, your sunnah has to be that you have to look at him. Abasa wa tawalla anja'ahu al-a'ma wa ma yudrika la'allahu yazzakka aw yazzakkaru fatanfa'ahu al-dhikra. What do you know, messenger, that this blind sahabi would benefit from you? What do you know how, how much he would benefit? Okay, the sunnah is this now. But does the Prophet ﷺ stay outside always in the masjid always? No. He says to some other sahabas who went to an extreme, he says to, who says, he says to them, when one Sahabi said, he said, Oh, Aina Nahlu min Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They asked Aisha radiallahu anha, they said, How does the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam practice his deen? She says, Oh, he, he's okay, he does this, he does. Then after they heard from her, these three Sahabas, they came to the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Hujrat, and one said, Ah, Aina Nahlu min Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ka'annahum taqalluha. As if they saw what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was doing was little. They need to do more. Because, قَدْ غَفَرَ اللَّهُ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ مَا تَقَدَّمَ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ They said, O oh, Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all his sins, past sins, future sins are forgiven. That's why he's doing little. We need to do more. So one of them said, Okay. أَمَّا أَنَا فَأَنَا 
Asumu dahra abadan. As for me, I'm going to fast every single day. I'm never going to break my fast. Throughout my life, every day from morning to evening, I want to fast. Another one says, Wa amma ana, ana asumu, uh, ana usalli layla, uh, wa, wa la arqud. He said, I will pray all night from Isha till Fajr and I will not go to sleep. Another one said, Wa amma ana,